Hello YouTube, welcome back to the next episode of my Wrath of Sparta campaign pack. I'm playing with the Spartans and attacking the first settlement, but before I start I would really recommend you to check out the description of this recording. You will see all the info about this campaign pack, you will also find a link to the wiki page, official wiki page for this campaign pack, there is really a tons and tons of good things that you would like compare this campaign pack to Hannibal at the gates Hannibal at the gates sucks Caesar in goal sucks Imperator Augustus it's free so it's okay but Wrath of Sparta amazing amazing campaign pack first and the only one for Rome 2 that I have pre-ordered. Please, I don't want to talk about it right now since I don't want to waste your time. I want you to enjoy in the upcoming battle, but please read description down below. This game have amazing new stuff and actually the whole story behind it is very, very good. I really like it. So enjoy in the battle. We are starting now fighting against the garrison army and few reinforcing fleets. Alright guys, my deployment is ready. No need for any special formation since I don't have so many different units. But here it is, I will start the battle. Fire at will for missiles. Can Press be the advice. My heavy infantry together with the general is on side. Behind them we have javelin men and the light cavalry, while my mill is contained of bowmen's and perioikoi hoplites. Enemy of course have reinforcements, they are positioned down in the village. I will try to skirmish them a little bit. By the way, skirmishing is my favorite type of fighting. All my hoplites are in a phalanx formation. I've put my javelin men on a group four, usually skirmishers. I like to keep them at group one so I can select them first. But javelin men, these two units, I will use them for flanking and I want them to enter into the battle last one after I've already engaged the enemy and hold him in place. Let's continue with the movement. My hoplites are a bit slower when moving in the phalanx. I will I will turn off fire at will for my bowmans. I don't want them to lose the ammunition. But let's see what do we oh yeah we have enemy archers up over here. Maybe I can try to skirmish them. Enemy is positioned down in a village, not moving, waiting for the reinforcements to come. And probably waiting for me to attack them, which I will do, no problem. I have a nice position up on a hill. We'll try to use a bit wider line, so... I, uh, sometimes it can be confusing to the IE, so they don't know where to focus their units. My heavy infantry will go on the right side, I will try to use this small passage and come behind them, probably flank them. My archers shooting at the enemy archers, which are already losing the morale, I can now use the flaming arrows to break them completely. And that's probably one or two wallies should be enough to break them. Flaming arrows have a lower damage, 
but they have a huge impact on the enemy morale. I wonder how they are still alive. Wow, look at this, 81 men out of the 120, who is shooting at them? Are those archers so strong? Back to the standard shot, bigger damage and more precise shots. Moving my javelin men and the light cavalry over here. What do we have here? Archers shooting at the general. Man, that's not good. Let's rush in with my cavalry. Try to get rid of them. My archers, I turned off fire at will. I don't want to get too close. What's happening up over here? My general is under the fire. Cavalry attacking into the archers, which are running away. That's a smart move. I don't want to get too deep. There is more javelin men over here. Javelin men can really be deadly to your cavalry. Cavalry did a good job entering in, but then we have more skirmishers and more spears. Now those militia hoplites turn their backs to my archers, which is good for me. They have no protection in the back. They don't have any shields and they will fall like trees. I can see that enemy have reinforcements over here, javelin men, javelin marines. Let's get closer with my javelin men. This will probably be a javelin engagement. All right, stop archers from shooting. Javelins, javelins, more archer marines. Are those archer marines so strong? I cannot believe. They really deal a lot of damage to my archers. I think they are much stronger than helot archers. Right, time to move my perioikoi. I hope it is closer. My skirmishing was successful. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Make the enemy attack me and then engage them on the open field. All my hoplites are in a phalanx formation. Whoa, look at this huge target for my archers. I hate when my phalanx formation turns off. Alright, now I have them in a good position. So I have to engage the enemy and then turn on the phalanx. My javelin men have a perfect position for flanking. So I have to engage the enemy and then turn on the phalanx. I really don't like it. Let's try to shoot at the enemy javelin men and skirmishers. While I still have cavalry, I can send them up over here, try to flank the enemy and get rid of their skirmishers. My javelin men, I don't I want them to be the most effective. And how to use them effectively? is to shoot at the backs of the enemy where enemy have no protection and where they are vulnerable let's attack those archers over here you can see that we have two types of archers simple archers and marine archers All right, sending in my javelin. Oh no, not enough ammunition. All right, pull back. No, my javelin men are out of the ammunition. That's not good, but I still have the heavy infantry over here to support my hoplites. Let's see, my archers are also out of the ammunition. Let's pull them back. Oh, I don't want them to get killed. Where is my cavalry? This light cavalry also have some javelins. Time to strike at the skirmishers. This is actually a really good battle. Oh, 
on my side and thanks to my skirmishers I was able to get the enemy and to, to get the enemy outside of the village I have a really nice position look at this if you if I highlight all you can see the exact positioning of my troops we have cavalry fighting the skirmishers over here my line is really really solid and I can even I even did a breakthrough over here so I can start flanking I have enough heavy infantry over here I will send my general in to maybe get some extra kills pushing forward through the gap with the rest of my hoplites we'll try to hit the back of the enemy using the hoplite phalanx light cavalry look they have javelins wow i really really like it let's engage those javelin men since there is no oh no i can i can hammer an anvil those guys where's my general Yeah, this battle is done. Let's check out the tactical view. No, you cannot see much from here. But this is really, really good attack on my side. Enemy morale is breaking. We'll try to charge with the cavalry. Strike and pull back, strike and pull back. In some situation, you can even exploit the morale mechanics by only running around with the cavalry. You don't even have to attack. You just can run around the enemy backs and not engage them at all. Just run around the enemy backs to influence and lower their morale. More heavy infantry. Royal Royal Spartan Hoplites does the general unit I think yeah Royal Spartans the general unit how much kills they have only 37 that's it let's engage look at this armored marines by the enemy too bad I cannot see their stats but this unit seems like a really, really tough opponent. Armored Marines. And you could see that those Marine Archers are also quite tough. My light cap, 285 kills. Look at this. 219 all, almost 300 kills for my light cavalry let's kill those armored marines man i will i really wonder what what stats those armored marines have it's probably elite unit. Look at my cavalry. Three more than a 300 kills, man. That's crazy. Too bad my general didn't have that luck. 106, 107 kills for my general. All right, I will, I will, I will stop this, and I will see you on a campaign map. Wow, this is a good screen, really. 
<laughs> this is a good screen, yeah. I could record like this more often. All right. Hope you enjoyed. See you on the campaign map. Lost 482. I think that I've killed all not. Look at this. Only one javelin man left. How much kills those armored marines have? Archer Marines, Marines. Hopefully this. It seems like only unit on boats are no triarius armored marines 33 kills all right let's occupy let's occupy the settlement my general increase in rank by the way i'm not sure that i've told you but now we have 12 turns per year so Every turn is only one month in a game. Look at the year 433, 32 before Christ. So, one, one turn is only one month in a game, which is really, really interesting. I, I'm really, really happy with this campaign, to be honest. And if you click on each settlement, you can see... A little bit of history if you're interested I would really like to read it but since I'm recording that for you and trying to make you fun together with me I I don't have a time to read this you will probably be boring you can read that in your own campaign we have only Matinea left if I want to defeat the Argos for Matinea it says is a city in the firing line in the central part of Peloponnesus. It lies halfway between war's principal belligerents, Athena and Sparta. This makes it strategically important and therefore vulnerable. As war comes to the region, the inhabitants of Mantinea will not be able to remain neutral for long. That's, that's true. All right, uh, time to progress. I will strike. I don't have enough movement points to attack Mantinea and finish off with Argos. But I can see that Athena is attacking my capital city. They have only seven units, which are probably not so good. Only militia, hoplites, light cav, and javelin men. I have one force over here ready. By the way, if you want to recruit a unit, now you need two turns. You cannot recruit a unit in a single turn. And that's some kind of a drawback. In the Grand Campaign, you could recruit tons of units and next turn you could move. And what, what I like to do is give the movement order. After I use all my movement points, I'm recruiting troops. Next turn, I have all my units, I can continue the movement and one more time, after I move where I want to, after I use all my movement points, then I continue with the recruitment. So I'm constantly moving and constantly recruiting new units. There is no waiting. But now you need two turns to recruit a unit. So if you, if I, next turn, if I have enough movement points i cannot move because i must wait one more turn to finish off with the recruitment but all right let's hire some mercenaries no not yet when i get closer i'm sure that sparta garrison can hold off the invaders you can see that i have three spartan hoplites three spartan youths three helot archers and two helot javelin men let's end the turn where is my where is my dignitary? 
Where is my dignitary? This is spy dignitary. Let's set him to administration. I can level up the general. We'll use. Whoa! Look at this. This is a new. So each of those skills now have an extra bonus. Strategist gives extra ammunition. Commander gives extra melee defense while fighter rise your melee attack. That's good. I hope that we have some new abilities also. So let's go, since I'm really a huge fan of skirmishing, let's go for strategist. I think this is my faction leader. Yeah, this is a faction leader. Let's secure promotion. Secure promotion and I can end the turn right now. Diplomacy is quite important. Diplomacy is quite at least from what I've read. Would you kindly allow trade? Who wants a trade agreement? Biotian League. So when you are doing some diplomatical negotiations with other nations always watch for how your friends look on them so my two major allies Ellis and Corinthos are good with Biotian League so I I won't hurt our relations if I accept this trade offer let's do it Athena gives wisdom Whoa. and they want to be my client state. I, give you peace I think it's too late for that, my friend. And they're offering me only 140. Cancel. Autumn. Hesad sings the prize of her. No, I don't want to read it. I don't want to read it. My noble dignitary increases in rank. What's this? Olympic Games. The Olympiad rolls over and very soon the time of games will be upon us. Honor to Zeus, the highest of the gods. Multitudes will come from far and wide to be entertained. Celebrate and show veneration. They expect a magnificent event. If we are to participate in the preparations, there are choices to be made. I wonder what consequences we have for each of those choices. Since I don't have enough cash, let's send an envoy. As a gesture of interest and goodwill, a representative will let the people know that you support a fair, fun and important competition. I really wonder what is the consequence. Trade gained. Who gained that trade? A general. This man crosses too much with sailors in ports. Move him before he adopts their foul. I really hate this kind of trade system. I really hate. And what's this? Is this a trade? This is just a warning. This is a warning, not a trait. It's really stupid, crazy. It's really crazy. Maybe this trait can later transform into something bad or what. And I was in this port for only one turn. Really strange. Let's check out on the character screen. Traits and households. Yeah. Really crazy. My influence is now quite high, 65%. Maybe I should use some other generals. So, Brasidas and Archidamos. Let's found them. Archidamos, here he is. Athena is raiding 
My settlement. No, I cannot let that happen. I must support this and who else? Archidamos and Brasidas. So where is Brasidas? Probably the guy up over there. Uh, the, the, the noble of one of my allies. What kind of a relations I have with these northern nations? The Salian League. Neutral Aetolian League. We are friendly. Let's try to trade. And they are good with my allies and unfriendly with Athena, which is good. So I want to trade with them. I want to engage in diplomacy. Yeah, chances for trade are high. By the way, look at the balance of power. Maybe I can make them my client state. No. All right, let's trade and let's ask for a payment. 1000, they want non aggression pact. Sorry, I want only a trade agreement. And look at this maybe non aggression pact would also be good because these factions on north, the Salian League, Biotian League, those nations are really large, and maybe in this moment they are threat for this small settlement of Lamia. If the Salian League decides to attack me over here, then I'm dead. But... But... Aetolian League is good with them. So if I'm good with Aetolian League, I will also become good with the Salian League. I am Let's honored trade to with them. No, they don't want to trade. They want a non-aggression pact and a payment. All right, let's uh, let's accept the offer. You have spoken with clarity of thought and a rhetorical. Look how many leagues we have. All right, we can continue. I have a non-aggression pact, so this settlement should be safe. I'm in a good relations with the Salian League and with Aetolian League. Only problem is Athens, which have large navy and regions scattered around. Let's first get rid of this Athenian force that is riding my settlement. No, I don't have enough movement points. Let's recruit more cavalry. Only a one unit. And more Spartan Hoplites. No. Look at this. Four turns for Spartan Hoplites. Man, you're crazy. No, I can defeat them with these nine units. They have only eight. They took some mercenaries. I will improve my capital province. I think I have bonus to wealth from culture. And this is good, look at this, they, we have minus 85% reduction in unrest caused by slaves. Because in a grand campaign, slaves were definitely something that you don't want. They rise your economy, but on the other side, they give you tons of penalties to the public order. And that penalty is reduced by 85%. All right, uh, let's upgrade the settlement. I definitely should start working on ports. Let's check out the shrines. I 
I don't need to improve it, but I want to improve my industry and rise the income. And I definitely need a stronger force up over here. I want to defend Lamia. I don't want to lose it and just let it to my enemies. This senseless war can end today. Sorry, my friends. I cannot sign that peace treaty. I'm not sure for how long am I recording. I always forgot to turn on a timer. Let's see, Olympic Games. What was the consequence? Uh, Olympics unsuccessful. The people are pleased we took part, but wish the investment had brought a greater reward. So we got plus three public order per turn, and I wonder what would happen if we in, if we invested five or two thousands cash. I've invested only five hundreds. All right. Plus three public order is also good. Faction joins war, Macedon and Epirus. Continuing with the recruitment up over here. And continuing my offensive. I will auto resolve this one. Remaining force, 70%, yeah, let's auto-resolve it. We'll occupy Your next military you traditions. Ready for battle. Mm, plus 5% melee attack skill for all hoplite units. I want to improve my skirmishers, my range units. I really like range units. Pathfinder plus 5% campaign map movement range. Very important skill. Very important skill. I don't want to waste my cash on that. Let's move my spy up to see what Athens are having. We can engage the Athena force but not yet not enough movement points let's recruit some mercenaries in case they decide to attack me how much do they have eight all right only one unit maybe Cav. and only one unit of medium Cav. Should be enough. Now Athena is really close to one of my ports, something that I was afraid of. Melos wants defensive alliance, sure. 
everything that will make us stronger. And not only I am gaining allies and some kind of political power, but I'm also denying those, those nations. I'm, I don't want them to join Atin. I didn't sign that alliance with them because I want them to fight with me. But I've signed it because I don't want them to fight with Athens. Research complete. Festival of Naked Youths. Plus four public order per turn. And only one turn remaining. Alright guys, I will, I will stop my recording now. You will see a battle in the next one, but I still don't have enough movement points. Look at this, they are running away from me through this forest. I don't have roads and the movement is really slow over there. And this is something that I am afraid of. Athena have an easy access to one of my settlements. But I will try to set up a good defense. Let's check out my garrison here. Uh, four ships and four land units all right that's it uh thank you for watching if you like what you saw today please press the like button and i will see you in the next episode